This video was sponsored by Coinbase, whose aim is to create an open financial system for the world. Stay tuned to find out more. I'm Andrew Edwards, and you're watching Gear Live. After over six years, Apple's follow-up to the 2013 Mac Pro has finally arrived, returning to the modular, easy to upgrade design that we knew and loved. In this video, I give you a look at the Mac Pro configuration that I put together, along with a preview of how I'm gonna make it even better by customizing it specifically for my needs. What's going on tech squad? Andrew Edwards here, editor in chief of gearlive.com. And as I mentioned today, we are talking about the new Apple 2019 Mac Pro. Pro and specifically my configuration, the configuration I built and put together when I ordered my specific Mac Pro. Now, as you can see here in this clip, I actually have two Mac Pros here in this physical location right now. It's not because I'm a baller, it's because I actually made a mistake when ordering my first Mac Pro. So I had to correct it by ordering a second Mac Pro and then I'm gonna send back that first one where I messed up on the configuration. But we're gonna get into all that, so let's head over to apple.com where I can walk you through my configuration. As you can see, when you go to the Mac Pro order page, the first thing you need to do is choose between the $5,999 tower version or the $6,499 rack version. So if you need to rack mount the Mac Pro, you go with the rack mount version, $6,500, but for most people, the vast majority of people that'll be picking this up, you're just gonna want the tower version. So you're gonna start at the base, $6,000 for the tower Mac Pro. Now the next page is gonna be where you can configure the Mac Pro to your preferred specifications. But before making any of those changes, Apple does give you the base Mac Pro specs right at the top. So if you wanted to, you can go directly to the checkout process. And what you'd get for your $6,000 is a Mac Pro with a 3.5 gigahertz, eight core Intel Xeon W processor that'll turbo boost up to four gigahertz. You get 32 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC RAM. That's four eight gigabyte RAM sticks. You get a Radeon Pro 580X graphics card with eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, the stainless steel frame with feet, the Magic Mouse, and the Apple Magic Keyboard with numeric keypad. And it should be stated that the keyboard and the Magic Mouse and the trackpad, that's also an option are all a custom color specifically for the Mac Pro. And we will talk about that a little later as well. Now the base configuration that I just read to you, that's a $6,000 Mac Pro. And I personally don't think it's that great of a deal for the money. It's actually a better deal to pay more for some specific customizations for the Mac Pro than it is to just get the base model if all you're gonna do is use it as the base model. The only time I recommend picking up the base model as is, is if you're gonna do the upgrades to the Mac Pro yourself. So rather than paying Apple to do the upgrades, you're gonna do the internal upgrading yourself. And if that's the case, you'll actually save money by going with the base model. But we're here for my configuration, so let's get started at the top with the processor. You can choose an 8, 12, 16, 24, or 28 core option. I wanted to go with the one that seemed like the best value for the money, so the law of diminishing returns obviously comes into play. So the one that met that qualification to me was the 16 core model. So I paid $2,000 for the 16 core Intel Xeon processor. That option adds $2,000 to the price. Next up is RAM, and this is actually one of the places where I messed up on my original order. I paid Apple $1,000 plus tax, so basically 1,100 bucks here in Washington State, for a 96 gigabyte upgrade. But I wasn't really paying $1,000 for 96 gigabytes because the Mac Pro at its base level comes with 32. I was really paying $1,000 plus tax, so again, 1,100 bucks for an extra 64 gigabytes of RAM. That was what was in my original order, and I quickly realized that makes no sense. That's way overpriced. And for the same amount of money, I could get four 64 gigabyte RAM modules from crucial.com, which will put me at 256 gigabytes. So 96 gigabytes versus 256 gigabytes. And by the way, the Mac Pro still came with the 32 gigabytes of RAM. So in total, rather than ending up with 96 gigabytes of RAM for the $1,100, I ended up 
with 288 gigabytes of RAM for the same amount of money. Now, before we go into the graphics card options and what I ended up choosing, I wanna give a big shout out to this video sponsor, Coinbase. Coinbase is the largest marketplace for cryptocurrency in the world, and they actually make it really easy to get started with crypto investing. And that's not just because they have a very easy to use interface, both on the web and in the app, but even more so, it's because they provide all the tools and resources that you need in order to educate yourself. Coinbase has a bunch of news and training resources built in to help you learn before you get started and help you keep learning as you go along. So rather than being interested after hearing about cryptocurrency and wondering how to get started, what all these different coins are, and just jumping into something that you may not fully understand, Coinbase focuses on education and ease of use. Right in the main interface, you have a news feed of important stories and updates on various cryptocurrencies. And Coinbase even has a feature called Coinbase Earn, where you can go through tutorials and take quizzes about different cryptocurrencies. And as you go through the course, you end up earning free cryptocurrency that just gets added in to your Coinbase account for you. You're actually earning free cryptocurrency in exchange for learning about cryptocurrency. The goal of Coinbase is to create an open financial system for the world. And if you wanna learn more, you can get started by clicking on the link down in the description below. And of course, be sure to consult a financial advisor if you have any questions before investing. Now back to the Mac Pro, let's talk about the graphics card options. The base model comes with a Radeon Pro 580X with eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which to me is just okay. Being that I do video editing and rendering, the graphics card is important to me, so I wanted to bump up another level to something a little more beefy and powerful, so I bumped it up to the Radeon Pro Vega 2. That one has 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory on the card, HBM2 memory, and it's also not cheap, it's actually a $2,400 add-on. Now, Apple also gives the option to select two of those Pro Vega 2 cards for $5,200, and they also have the Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo, which is basically two of those cards packed in to one card so you don't have to use both your MPX module slots if you want the power of two graphics cards. But it doesn't stop there because you can actually get two of those cards that pack in the power of two of the Pro Vega 2 cards, basically giving you the power of four of those cards that I added to my Mac Pro. That is a $10,800 option. If you just want one of those cards, it's a $5,200 option. Now, I'd personally love to have a Pro Vega 2 Duo card, but to me, it's a little overkill at $5,200. $100. I don't think I'm going to see any benefit from having that card in there. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to stick with the Pro Vega 2 card for now. And in the future, as newer cards come out, people are going to start selling their older cards and I may pick up one later down the road. But for now, I'm happy with a Pro Vega 2 card. All right, next up is storage. This one is actually a little bit disappointing for me. The new MacBook Pro ships with up to eight terabytes of storage. When Apple launched the Mac Pro, they said eight terabytes was coming, but it wasn't available just yet. So on both the first Mac Pro that I ordered, which is going back, and the second Mac Pro that I ordered, I maxed it out, but the most that was available was four terabytes for the SSD. So again, the base is 256 gigabytes of storage. You can upgrade it to one, two, four, or eight terabytes. Eight terabytes is available now. The option came online about three days after I ordered that second Mac Pro. Pro. I'm not going to return it just to get eight terabytes of storage. So for now, I'm out of luck, at least on the primary drive. I do have a couple of ways that I'm going to be customizing this Mac Pro to add more storage to it than probably any computer you've ever seen before. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see that customization video. As I said, I ordered the four terabyte SSD. That is a $1,400 option. So add on $1,400 to the total so far for my Mac Pro. Up next is the afterburner card option. This is a $2,000 option, and it seems like there's a lot of confusion about who needs the afterburner card, who should buy it, who shouldn't buy it. And I've seen a few people pick it up who actually didn't need it and may have wasted their money. So first, right out of the gate, if you are not editing video using the Mac Pro, then you do not need the afterburner card. It's that simple. That is a card for video editors. If you're doing music, 
you're doing 3D modeling, if you're doing graphic design, if you're shoving this in a rack and using it for anything that has nothing to do with video editing, you do not need to spend $2,000. So that's saving you money right there. Now, if you do edit video, but you don't shoot in ProRes or ProRes RAW, you do not need the Afterburner card because that is what it's for. It is to allow you to import your ProRes or ProRes RAW footage and edit it right out of the gate without needing to convert it first. The Afterburner is going to cut through that footage like butter. But if you don't use ProRes, it's not gonna cut through it like butter because it's for ProRes. Now, if you're not a video editor, you may be wondering, what is this guy talking about? Don't worry about it. We're about to go to the next topic. But at the end of the day, I don't shoot in ProRes. I shoot in 6K on a Panasonic S1H. That is this camera that I'm talking into right now. 6K files, not in ProRes, not in ProRes RAW. That means I don't need the Afterburner card. A ProRes update is coming to this camera, so I can choose to shoot in ProRes RAW in the future if I want to. But if I do choose to switch to that in the future, I may be able to pick up an Afterburner card used from someone else at a discount. The next option Apple gives you is to either stick with the stainless steel frame with feet or to pay a $400 upgrade fee in order to have the stainless steel frame with wheels. Now, I don't need my Mac Pro to be wheeling all over the place. I can easily pick it up by the two handles. No need to pay $400 for the wheels. I'm not putting it anywhere that it needs to move around. It stays in one place. So I saved the money, did not opt for the $400 wheels. And finally, the last option, and this is also the last mistake that I made on the first Mac Pro order that I put in, you get to choose between the Magic Mouse, the Magic Trackpad, or both along with the Magic Keyboard. Now, I thought I chose both options. I wanted to be able to show both to you guys in the video that I'm making so you can see the custom colors, the exclusive colors for the Mac Pro. Somehow I ended up just choosing the mouse, which I do not like Apple's Magic Mouse at all. I'm not a fan, but I do love the Magic Trackpad. That is what I use. I use a keyboard and Magic Trackpad. Didn't select it, called Apple up when I realized this and they said, we have no way of charge i'm like just charge me for just send me the trackpad separately charge me for it no big deal They're like well we don't have a skew for it we don't know how to we have no way of adding it to a cart on its own we have no way of it has to be ordered at the time of the you place the order the back couple, just send me the trackpad and they're like well would you like to cancel your order and then place it again and include the trackpad and i'm like that's that's where we're all right now i need to cancel an order for a five figure costing a computer so I can add a trackpad in. I'm not gonna do that, that's ridiculous. But then with all the other things, including the RAM mistake that I made earlier, and by the way, that first Mac Pro, I also ordered the 12 core instead of the 16 core. And when I realized the money I was paying towards RAM that I didn't need to pay, I just moved that money over to get a better processor. But that's a long story all to say that at the end of the day, I ended up choosing the Magic Mouse and Magic Trackpad with the Magic Keyboard. And by the way, just my own personal opinion, the Magic Keyboard that comes with the iMac Pro, which is space gray colored, looks better than the silver keyboard that comes with the Mac Pro. Especially when you put it side by side with the Magic Trackpad that comes with the Mac Pro. The black Magic Trackpad looks a lot better next to the space gray keyboard. Again, just my opinion. I wish Apple gave you the option when placing your order. So there you have it, that is my Mac Pro configuration. I did also buy the Pro Display XDR, Apple's new 6K display. When I ordered it, it said it would ship in seven to 14 days. That was on December 10th. Today is December 23rd, 13 days from the day that I ordered it. Still hasn't shipped, still no word from Apple. Tomorrow is day 14, Christmas Eve. Will it ship by the time tomorrow ends? I am not confident. Anyway, let me know what you think about my Mac Pro order. If you ordered a Mac Pro, let me know how your configuration differs from mine. And let me know also what you're using your Mac Pro for. Any questions about this, leave them down below and I will meet you there for further discussion. If you want even more talk on the Mac Pro, my configuration, and just other thoughts in general, be sure to listen to the Geared Up podcast. Geared Up is the weekly podcast that I do with John Rettinger, where we talk about the latest in tech, gadgets, and games each and every week. If you want even more of this content when you're on a commute, when you're in your car, train, bus, falling asleep, or while you're at work, be sure to check out geared up. Now, as I said, I do have another video coming giving you a full rundown of the customizations that I'm gonna do 
to the Mac Pro additions I'm gonna make to it. If you wanna catch that video, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any future videos. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. As always, guys, I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Edwards, and I will catch you in the next video.